Hello there. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of probability joint mass functions. So recall, a joint probability mass function, probability of x and variable y, with values x and y, is defined to be equal to the simple probability that x is equal to x and y is equal to y. So we're going to discuss this function together with its corresponding marginal probability mass functions and talk about how to calculate the expectation and variance of the variables x and y from the joint probability mass functions and its marginal PMFs. So this is the definition of the joint PMF. Let us also recall the definitions of the marginal PMFs as well. So the marginal PMF uh, of random variable x is given by the sum across all y values in the set y of pxy pxyk. So this is going to be equal to say px1 plus px2 plus px3 plus px4 across all possible values of y. And similarly, uh, the probability of random variable y at value little y can be obtained by summing across all values x in the set x of the joint probability mass function pxy across all values x while leaving y as a variable. So this is sort of looks like uh, py1 plus p p1y plus p2y plus p3y across all the values x in the set x. So again, these are what we call marginal probability mass functions. So now let us talk about uh, some values. And also recall that the probability, the marginal PMF of x at value x is the same thing as saying the simple probability that x is equal to x and the marginal PMF of y evaluated at y is the same thing as saying the simple probability that y is equal to y. So they represent the same exact thing. So now let us define uh, what this video is going to be pretty much focused on. So definition. So the mean of random variable x is going to be defined to be equal to the sum across all x values of x times the marginal function px of x, and some people represent this as the expectation of random variable x, and mu y, or mu of random variable y, is gonna be the sum across all y values of y times the marginal function py of y, and some people will notate this as the expectation of random variable y. So those are the definitions of the expectation. Uh, similarly, the second moment of random variable x is going to be defined to be the summation across all x values times x squared times the marginal PMF px of x. And the second moment of random variable y is going to be defined to be the sum of all y values of y squared times the marginal PMF of y evaluated at y. With these things, we can, of course, define the variance of random variable x, which some people will abbreviate as sigma x squared. So this is going to be equal to the second moment of x minus the mean of x squared, or more, in more brief terms, this. And similarly, the variance of y, which some people abbreviate as sigma y squared, can be found by doing the second moment of y minus the mean of y squared, which again can be simplified using the notation, the second moment of y minus uh, mu y squared. So these are all the definitions of the terms for which we are interested in finding. So let us first, um, so for the rest of this video, we're gonna be pretty much working on an example, a joint probability mass functions, calculating the marginal PMFs, and calculating these values for which we've just defined. So the example that we're going to be working with is the following uh, function. I'm not going to say if it's a probability mass function or not. So the values 
are going to be, of course, x and y. So our x values, let us assume, are 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's assume our y values are also the same. And keep in mind, some people choose to choose do the x values across the top and the y values down the bottom, or write them in a coordinate plane. So make sure uh, you know exactly what you're looking at in all of these tables. So let's define these values. Let's define that to be 0. Let's define that to be 120 for all of them. Let's do 1, 2, 1, and 2. Let's do 1, 3, 1, 3. And let's do 1, 1, 0. And one. So zero over twenty and zero over twenty. So let's first verify that this is a probability joint mass function. So property one. Clearly, all x and x and all y and y satisfy x belongs to the integral zero one or p of x belongs to 0, 1, and the probability of y belongs to 0, 1 as well. Namely, all these elements are between 0 and 1, so that's okay. Secondly, let's do the sum of our values p, x, y. So let's do, uh, it doesn't matter, you can do the columns or the rows, and let's just factor out 1 over 20. So we have 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 for the first column plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 for the second column, uh, plus 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3, plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1. So that's going to be equal to 1 20th times, so that's going to be 3 plus 6 plus, so that's going to be 8 plus 3. So what does that come out to? So this is going to be equal to 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12, 12 plus 8 is 20. So of course that's equal to 1. So therefore, since property 1 and property 2 satisfy, then P, x, y, x, y, is a joint probability mass function on variables x and y. So that finishes the first criteria that we need to verify uh, for joint probability mass functions. So now let's calculate the marginal PMS. So the marginal PMS of variables x and variable y. So let's start with x. So px of x, by definition, is going to be the sum across all y values and y of pxy of x, y, k. So the values of y vary from 1 to 4. So this is going to be the joint probability mass function, which I'm just going to abbreviate by p of x comma 1 plus p x 2 plus p x 3 plus p x 4. So these values belong to the value of y. So this is the implicit representation of the marginal PMF for x. So let's, let's figure out the domain or the values so we're going to put all the values of x inside of here. So remember, x has the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So they're going to go here, 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 and here. So p x of 1 is going to be equal to p 1 of 1 plus p 1 of 2 plus p 1 of 3 plus p 1 of 4. And if you look at the table that we constructed, 
all of these values is actually sum of row one. If you had it presented how I have. So if you do the sum of row one, you can find that this actually comes out to 320. Similarly, px of two is going to be equal to p21 plus p22 plus p23 plus p24. So one can find that this is actually the sum of row two, which you should be able to find to be equal to 720. Similarly, px3 is going to be the sum of row three, which you can find to be 320. And px4 is going to be the sum of row four, which you can find from the table to be 7 twentieths. So we have our values or our outputs for the function px at these values, one, two, three, and four for x. So let's write this down. So x, px of x. So x ray is one, two, three, and four. So we found for one, we have 320, 720, 320, 720. And of course that has some graph uh, if you want to associate that. But this is the marginal probability mass function for random variable x. So now let us do the same for y. So by definition, the marginal PMF for y is going to be the sum across all x values in x of the joint PMF BXY of xk times y. So our x values are, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, same as y, but different values, of course. So I'm going to abbreviate PXY just by P. So it's going to be P1Y plus P2Y plus P3y plus P4y. So these numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4, are all the values coming from set x. So now I'm going to look at the values of y, which of course are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So one can find that py1, py2, py3, py4. So what is py1? So that's going to be p11 plus p21 plus p31 plus p41. And if you look at the table, you can find that this is actually the sum of the first column, which you can find to be equal to 3 twentieths. So the next value, py2, that's going to be p12 plus p22 plus p32 plus p42. So if you look at the table that we had, this is actually just the sum of column 2, which you can find to be 6 twentieths. In a similar fashion, you can find that this is just the sum of column 3. And this is just the sum of column 4, which will come out to 8 over 20 and 3 out of 20. So these are the outputs for the function py at varying y values 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can summarize this in a table. So all our values are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So PYY for 1 came out to 3 twentieths, 6 twentieths, 8 twentieths, and 3 twentieths. So this is what we call the marginal PMF for random variable y. 
So now let's calculate the expectation and also the variance. So let's do x. So the mean or expectation of x, which we can abbreviate by ex, by definition is the sum across all x values of x times the marginal PMF for x. So this is going to be equal to what? So our x values are 1, and the marginal PMF of x at 1 is going to be 3 twentieths. We go back up to the table that we just constructed. So this is going to be 2 times 7 20 plus 3 times 3 20 plus 4 times 7 20. So we can factor out a 1 20th. So we have 1 times 3 is 3. 7 times 2 is 14. 3 times 3 is 9. 7 times 4 is 28. And 3 plus 14 plus 9 plus 28, that's going to come out to uh, 54 twentieths, which we know is 2.7. So this is the mean of random variable x. Now let us calculate the second moment of x. So by definition, this is going to be the sum across all x values of the random variable x. Uh, x squared times the marginal PMF of x evaluated at x. So this is going to be 1 squared times 3 twentieths plus 2 squared times 7 twentieths plus 3 squared times 3 twentieths, plus 4 squared times 7 twentieths. So again, we can factor out a 120, and we have 1 squared times 3 is going to be 3. 2 squared is 4 times 7 is 28. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 7 is 112. So once we do this, so 112... So 27 plus 3 is going to be 30. 30 plus 112 is 142. So that's going to go up to 170 over 20. Uh, what's that? That's 8.5. So this is the second moment of random variable x. So from here, the variance of random variable x, as we know from the definition, is the second moment, well, it's not really a definition, it's more of a property, but you can set it as a definition to get the other equivalent form. So it's gonna be the second moment minus the mean of x, the quantity squared. So our second moment we found was 8.5. The mean came out to 2.7 squared. So we have 8.5 minus 7.29, which is 1.21. So this is the variance of the random variable x. And we can actually go a step further and calculate the standard deviation. So the standard deviation for random variable x, some people will abbreviate this as sigma sub x. So that's of course equal to the square root of the variance of x, or currently the square root of sigma x squared. So it's gonna come out to the square root of 1.21, uh, which we should be able to find that's just equal to 1.1. So that's the standard deviation of random variable x. So of course you can do the same for y. So similarly, one can find uh, the values of expected value of y, which is of course the same as writing mu sub y. Uh, we can find the second moment of y. That's an x, not y. We can find the variance of y. And we can also find the standard deviation of random variable y. And I leave those four calculations uh, as an exercise. But that's just a quick overview of joint probability mass functions, how to ca calculate the marginal probability mass functions of its variables, and also how to calculate the expectation, second moment, variance, and standard deviations of those individual variables as well. Hope you enjoyed.